Welcome back to Rich Words Music, where today we're doing a comparison and a little bit of a shootout between five different plexi styles of overdrive pedals. Five different marshals in a box, call them what you will, but we've got five different brands, we've got five different price points, from pretty cheap all the way through to pretty darn expensive. And what we're going to do today, and what's going to be really personally interesting for me, is see if the other four can compete with this, the Bogner Lagrange. Now I saw this pedal first in 2016 and I was instantly sold on it because I had the misfortune of watching Pete Thorne's video about it. Obviously he makes every single pedal or guitar or bit of gear that he plays sound amazing, and I'll link to his video there. But I was totally sold on this pedal, it was my first ever plexi pedal, and it was pretty much my only one for the next six years. It does amazing low gain tones, it does great medium gain, and it does pretty decent high gain Marshall type sounds as well. Not that I personally use those that much. Since then though, in the past couple of years, I've played a couple of cheaper plexi type pedals from New X and Tone City that have really opened my eyes to more expansive types of Marshall or plexi sounds, and we're going to put four of those pedals up against the Lagrange today. So let's take a look at those five pedals on the table. We'll start with the Lagrange of course. Many of you will know this pedal already because it is six or seven years old, but for those of you not familiar with it, let me walk you through what we've got on the pedal here. Now the Lagrange is super versatile. It's got two sides, you've got two foot switches here, and you've got the drive side which is activated by this switch, but you've also got an independent clean boost side. That's this white knob here, and you can run the two sides together, you can stack them, or you can use them independently of one another as well. So that makes this pedal even more flexible. Now in terms of the drive side of the pedal, we've got a bunch of switches and a bunch of knobs here. Over on the right you've got the gain control, and next to it you've got a channel blend control. Now for those of you unfamiliar with plexis, in the 60s you'd get two channels on a plexi amp, and what players used to do was jumper the two together using a short jack lead, and that would give them access to both of the channels together, and it would let them blend them to perfection because they both had very different tonal characteristics. And what you can do with this knob is find the sweet spot between the two channels, or just use one or the other, however you like. Next to that we have a tone control, and next to that we have a volume control. So the switches from left to right, we have a gain switch here, you can switch between low, medium or high gain. Next to that we have the Variac switch, and if you turn on the Variac switch you get a boost in voltage, but a lowering in output, a bit more gain, a bit more harmonics, kind of an Eddie Van Halen sort of a sound. Next to that we have a presence knob, you can switch between low and high presence, and over on the right we have a structure knob, which you can switch between open, middle and tight, and that basically affects the tightness or the openness of your sound, and we're going to hear all of those in the video video. So what are the four pedals that we're putting up against the Lagrange? Well let me just say that the Lagrange currently costs around $200 or euros, so it's quite expensive, it's American built, and when I bought it six or seven years ago it was £129, so about $130 back in the day, so it's gone up a lot in price since then, but it's actually in the middle of the price range of the pedals that we've got here, at least in yesterday's prices. So the first pedal is the cheapest, and that is the New X Plexi Crunch pedal, which as you can see looks a little bit like a Mars amp. This will set you back about $50 or pounds, so it's very much an affordable pedal, and it does high gain Marshall Plexi sort of tones. And actually if you'd like to hear this pedal in a lot more detail than I'm going to show in this video, then head across to my dedicated video that I did of it to hear it with different guitars through many different musical genres. But this pedal just has the four controls, it has a master volume control, a preamp control which controls your preamp gain, so it's effectively the gain control, and then we have two different tone controls. The one on the left is labeled tone, and that controls the mid portion of your tone, and the one on the right is the presence, which controls more of the high end. As I've said, the Plexi Crunch is more of a high gain Plexi pedal, so it really loves to do raucous rock and roll, and that's what we're going to hear in a little bit. Next to the Plexi Crunch, we have the similarly priced and very well loved Tone City Golden Plexi 2, and this is the revamped edition of the very famous Golden Plexi pedal that was first made famous by Andertons. This costs about $60 or $70 or euros. It has three controls, a gain, a volume, and a tone. It's very, very small so it'll fit on pretty much any pedal board, and the Mark II version is said to have a slightly smoother gain control than the original, which was known for having no gain or all the gain as soon as you went up to about 10 or 11 o'clock, so we're going to hear that one too. And again, I have a separate video on this pedal if you'd like to hear it with different guitars in, in as many different musical genres as I can physically perform in. Next to that we have the Carl Martin Plexi Ranger 
pedal. Now Carl Martin is of course very famous for its older Plexi pedals, but the Plexi Ranger takes things up a notch. Again, it's a double-sided pedal, so we actually have a Plexi side and a Ranger side, which is a treble booster sort of a pedal. So that's going to give us some extra flexibility, and a treble booster pedal is going to work very well in conjunction with that Plexi type of gain sound. So on the Plexi side here, we have a level control, a tone control, and a gain control. And on the boost side, we have a boost control, a frequency control, and a rain control, along with a three-way low cut switch. So many options with the Plexi Ranger pedal. That'll set you back about $160, $160, pounds, €160. Euros. So kind of affordable, but moving up into more expensive territory now. And the very final pedal in our five-way today is the Ramble FX Marvel 3. Now this is very much boutique overdrive territory. These cost about $180, but they're much more expensive here in Europe, thanks to their scarcity. And actually Ramble FX is no longer going because the founder of the company sadly passed away in 2022. But if you can find one of these, they're astounding pedals. It looks like a Marshall as well, just like the new X, and it's pretty simple in terms of what it can do. So we have four controls and a two-way switch there. So the two-way switch lets you switch between 9 volt or 18 volt operation, although you just need a standard 9 volt power supply to plug into it. And we have a master control, which is your volume. We have a presence control, which is your tone. And we have the two channel gain controls here that you can blend just like on a traditional plexi amplifier. This is the high treble channel and this is the normal channel. So that's five plexi pedals for you today then. And what we're going to do is a nice big classic rock loop with my Epiphone Les Paul and its fat high output humbuckers. And we're gonna hear how these plexi pedals do a bit of rock and roll. We'll start with the cheapest one. We'll start with the new X plexi crunch and we'll move our way up all the way to the ramble effects. We'll blend them in together. We'll stack them and see how they play off against one another. So the rest of my rig for today is going to be my Hughes and Kettner Ampman Classic pedal amp. We'll be on the clean channel of the amp. The pedals will be going into that clean amp. I'll play a classic rock loop on my Boss RC10 looper. We'll twiddle some knobs, have some fun, and afterwards we'll speak in a little bit more detail.
So that was five different plexi pedals and I hope you enjoyed the sounds. Leave me a comment right now telling me which of the pedals you thought sounded best. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing which one you guys think was the optimum plexi sort of a pedal. So the test here for me personally was to see if any of the others could keep up with my Bogner Lagrange pedal. And actually, you know what? You can get all of these plexi pedals to sound pretty much the same if you tweak the knobs quite a bit. Who'd have thought it? Big, big surprise there. But they also all have their own unique aspects and characters as well, and you can also make them all sound a bit different. So it's kind of like, well, just like with everything really, find the kind which is really gonna suit the sort of music that you play. See, for me personally, I tend to gravitate towards the more lower gain of the plexi spectrum, and for me, this is where the Lagrange really, really excels. These are actually the settings that I tend to use most of the time, and they work across all of my guitars. Generally, I'll be playing a Telecaster and a Les Paul for humbucking sounds and this lower gain setting open structure everything just past 12 o'clock except the gain which is at about 10 or 11 o'clock that works amazingly for both of those i get great indie rock and classic rock tones and with the humbuckers it's pushed to amazing sort of stadium rock sort of sounds kick in the boost as well at about one o'clock and it will do pretty much everything and for me also the boost at one o'clock into my clean amp is a lovely throaty sort of a crunchy sound which i really find usable too so the lagrange is a fantastic pedal and if you're looking for that kind of sound and if you're looking for the extra versatility then this is really something that I suggest checking out. Fantastic pedal, I still really love it and I'm not sure yet if any of the other four will be able to unseat this pedal at the top of the standings when it comes to plexi type pedals for me anyway. So let's talk about the other pedals now and we'll go through again in value order. Now the new X pedal is the cheapest of the bunch at about $50 this is almost an impulse purchase when it comes to overdrive pedals and if you want high gain plexi tones you'll get them in abundance with this pedal. It's really really good at that. It's not so good at the lower gain sounds as I said earlier and as I also explain in the other video that I did of the pedal but if you want high again sounds if you want thick walls of martial type distortion sludgy doomy stoner rock sort of stuff this pedal will do that for days it's fantastic for those things it feels a bit cheaper than all the others because it is a bit cheaper than all the others but for what it does for what it offers it's a really good choice and if you're a high gain sort of a player looking to get into the plexi sort of a tone world it's a really cool choice and you know what the other really cool choice is for that sort of price point well yes it's the tone city golden plexi too i love this pedal it's so small it's so easy to use it's so simple with the three knobs it's just really really decent and it sounds fantastic again on pretty much all of the guitars that I put it through again I like to have the gain almost all the way down to give me a classic rock sort of a sound have the tone up to almost 12 o'clock and the volume where I need it and it just works this pedal is actually way more versatile than you would give it credit for again watch the video of me demoing it with different guitars and in different genres to hear that in practice but it's a really really great pedal and if you want to try plexi pedals for the first time this is a great choice too especially if you want to do lower gain sort of stuff. It doesn't quite sound as smooth and refined as the Lagrange and also the new X has the Aurora sort of sound and characteristic than the Lagrange but these two pedals are both great for beginners. They're both great to add to any pedal board that needs a bit of plexi action on the cheap. So now we move up into the more expensive pedals and next on the list was the Carl Martin Plexi Ranger and this is a really really interesting pedal. I really love the combination of the treble booster and the plexi side as well. This one also is built to rock. It's very much a high gain plexi sort of a pedal although you can coax low and mid gain sounds out of it and it sounds massive I really really like it great thick rich rocking plexi sort of a sound and the treble booster is really flexible as well I also like to run the treble booster on its own again to boost my clean amp but together you get this lovely fat sound and it just works a really awesome pedal and something a little bit different from your standard brands that most guitar players tend to use so if you want something a bit different give the Carl Martin a try and you never know it just might be the perfect thing for your setup and your sound. And the last pedal that we tried was the exquisite Ramble FX Marvel 3 drive pedal. And from looks to tones, to the feel, to the build quality, this is a boutique pedal in every sort of a way. It took me a while to get into this pedal and really understand it and to tweak the two different parallel gain stages together to get the tones that I was wanting. And again, if you're gonna be buying this, it's not just a gain control, there's two together and you can learn to tweak them and find your own sweet spots. But I found for me personally that really turning down the gain is the secret to getting the biggest tones and you can kind of edge them up from there. And for me, Everything from pushed cleans through to thick Indian stadium rock through to almost 
old school classic sort of metal sounds are within this pedal. It's a very, very decent pedal and they are increasingly rarer because of course the company is no longer going after the owner passed away in 2022. But fantastic pedals if you ever get a chance to try one. And so at the end of the day, we've tried five different plexi pedals. This was the original, the LaGrange. Do any of the others take its place as my favorite plexi pedal of choice for 2023? I'm not sure they do yet, but I'm gonna have this board together with me for a while. I'm gonna play all of them through my different guitars and amps and see which one might take the place of this one. Now, one disadvantage to the LaGrange is you've got all these options, you've got the two sides, but it's quite a big pedal. If I've got a small board, then something like the Golden Plexi 2 might just take its place. But in terms of tonality, in terms of features, I really love the LaGrange. That said, of course, all of the other pedals have their own unique uses and advantages. So what I would recommend is if you're looking for a Plexi pedal, head down to your local guitar store, try the rest of them out and see which one works best for you. And of course, we've done five today, but there are so many more different Plexi pedals out there. Possibly the most famous at the moment being the Wampler Plexi Drive, which now comes in mini format as well. That's definitely the one that I need to try soon. But where else should I try? What other Plexi pedals are out there? Leave me a comment down there and let me know what you think and I'll try and round up a few more in 2023. Give them a try and see which is king of the plexi pedals. Now I hope this video has opened your eyes to some of the different uses of plexi pedals. I hope you enjoyed the loop. I hope you enjoyed hearing the similarities and differences between these pedals. If you've got any more questions, let me know and I shall answer them to the best of my ability. And if you're still around, it'd make my day if you'd like the video or maybe even sub to the Rich Words Music channel because that really helps out building the little community that we've got going on here. But that's been it for today's video. I've been Rich for Rich Words Music, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.